We are live in the quarantine, and it's Coach Josh. Today, we are going to do a, a mobility routine. So we're going to do a series of stretches that um, will make you feel good. Uh, I know that I have been sitting a lot more than I have ever sat in my life in the last couple of days. So uh, and in addition to that, I'm doing a bunch of these body weight workouts that are new and extremely taxing. So we're going to go through the entire body. We're going to stretch everything out. We're going to um, move our muscles in, uh, in, in ways that will uh, help you feel better, breathe, um, um, get you uh, loosened up and relaxed and uh, ready to kick ass both in the rest of your day and the rest of your week for the, for, for the workouts that we got going on. And, um, and uh, my story today is actually, I, I got this um, reminder from one of, the, one of my uh, fellow warriors last night. I was talking on the phone with, uh, with her and she was saying, um, there's no neutral when it comes to this uh, quarantine situation. I'm gonna come out on the other side either better or worse and it's up to me how, what happens in the interim. It's up to me how that goes. And I love that attitude because it's true in, it's as true in nature as it is true in, in life. There's no, uh, the brain doesn't have a, a, a neutral decision. There's, it's binary, it's forward or it's back. We're either working or we're resting. We're either, um, we're either progressing or we're, when you eat food, the food is either taking you towards your goal or it's taking you further away. There's no, there's no neutral, there's no in the middle decision. Now you, you make as many decisions as you can that take you forward, right? And uh, both of what you have the strategy for and what you have the, the willpower for and what you have the discipline for. But at the end of the day, it's the decisions that you make that determine your destiny. So uh, we've, all, we've all seen people who started in a good place and through a series of unfortunate decisions maybe ended up in a bad place. And we've, we've also met people who um, you know, started in an unfortunate place and through a, a series of good decisions you know, uh, comes out the other side and, or, or creates, creates a different environment of circumstances for themselves. And it's just, just a matter of decisions and, and a little luck. But, but luck is a lot more about preparation than anything else, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. But right now, we've made the decision to wake up, to move our bodies, to mobilize. So we're going to do a fun mobility series together. So I'm going to go and I'm going to get on my yoga mat so you can see me do all this fun stuff. And uh, hopefully you've got something soft to sit on in your living room or uh, in your environment. So, oh, I was going into the shin box. That's a little early. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, a fire or a four point stance to do some fire hydrants. So I'm here. I'm on all fours on my mat. I'm a... Uh, I'm going to take my knee, keep it bent to a 90 degree, lift it up and pause for one second, bring it right back down, lift it up, pause for one second, bring it right back down. So I'm going to do five reps, lifting, dropping, four, then I'm going to do a fifth rep here, lifting up that hip. And then once I've done my five hydrants, I'm going to circle, I'm going to take big circles backwards first, then to the front, back to the front. I'm going to do five front to back circles. Again, keeping my elbows straight. Three. It's four, big circle, drawing a big circle with that knee. Five, then I'm going to reverse the circle. Two. Three. Four. Five. Awesome. Then, I'm going to go to the other side. Lift, pause for one second, come back down, lift, pause for one second, come back down, lift, pause, come back down, four, five. Then I'm going to circle again from the back to the front, big circles, keeping that knee bent to 90 degree. And then when I get done with those Five circles back to front. I'm going to go front to back. Enjoying that warming feeling that's coming through my hip right now. Really liking that. So I warmed up the glutes. Stretched the groin a little bit. Now we're going to drop into that frog stretch. So, kicking out my knees wide. Toes pointed out away from my feet. 
away from my knees, squeezing the earth. Once I find the tight spot, as soon as I feel that tension in my groin, I'm gonna to start to squeeze the earth with my knees. I'm gonna squeeze for five, four, three, two, big belly breath, still wanna breathe, one, and then relax and let that tension leave my groin just a little bit. Let it sink in a little bit deeper. I'm already feeling this quite a bit in my hips and my groin, but I'm gonna squeeze again for five, four, three, squeezing through the abs. Everything's tight. One, and rest. And then I'm gonna relax the groin, and then I'm gonna push up, squeeze my knees together to get out of it. Whew, all right. So I'm coming into a four-point position again. And I'm gonna do a classic cat-cow. I'm, I'm leading this tilt with the pelvis, so I'm gonna be tilting from the pelvis first. I'm gonna inhale and look up, exhale, Tuck chin to chest, inhale, look up, exhale, chin to chest. That's two, we're gonna do this five times. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Exhale. Nice, feeling the pop in your neck and your shoulders and in your back. We're gonna go into a pigeon. So we're gonna start in this high plank. I'm gonna take my right knee, I'm gonna drop it in between my hands here. And then I'm gonna take my high hip, which is my left hip in this case. I'm gonna drop that left hip down to the ground to try and stretch that right hip a little bit more. So I'm leaning into it. Back leg is strong. Knees off the ground. So you're inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth, long, slow exhale to let that hip relax just a little bit. I'm gonna take two more big breaths in the belly, exhale, in the belly, exhale. And I'm gonna come back up Switch spots. Now my left knee is underneath me. I'm gonna keep that back leg strong. I'm gonna drop that right hip or the high hip towards the earth to get that stretch going. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Trying to keep that spine nice and long, back leg straight, big breath again. Two more breaths. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna get on my knees and I'm gonna push the earth apart with my knees. So I'm squeezing my glutes, pushing my knees apart. Abs are tight. My thumbs are gonna be pointed out away from my body. So I'm here, and then I'm going to do some, uh, oh wait, I'm gonna lift up, and then I'm gonna do some shoulder circles. So I'm just gonna move tiny, tiny circles back and forth, first uh, clockwise. Then I'm gonna rotate counterclockwise. Keep, keep rotating, keep those elbows straight. That forces the scapula to move a little bit more. Ugh, got a little tension in my right shoulder, that's fun. Shake it out. Then we're going to go ahead and do some uh, upward and downward dog. So if you're a yoga fan, you're gonna like this. I'm gonna plant my hands I'm gonna get my butt into the air. So my hips are high in the air and I'm going to pedal. I'm gonna try and touch the floor with my heel. 
to try to lock out that leg, keeping the elbows rotated in. Then I'm going to do a dive bomb, look up to the sky, take a big breath. And then I'm going to inhale, come all the way back up. I'm going to pedal one more time, elbows tucked in, pedaling, trying to touch the ground with my heels. Then I'm going to dive bomb again. Inhale, come back to the high plank, set down my knee. Now I'm going to do uh, a, uh, a kneeling position. So I'm pushing my shoelaces in the back all the way into the floor. My lead leg, I'm driving my foot into the mat, into the floor. So I'm tilting that pelvis. So if my left knee is down, my left arm is going to slowly rise up, and I'm going to let that shoulder glide forward, letting my arm get really long. We keep reaching, not in a hurry, keeping that rib cage down, that rib cage down, especially when I get here to the top, I'm shrugging up into the ceiling while my rib cage is pulling down, and I'm breathing into my belly. Then I'm going to rotate my arm like a rotisserie chicken, I'm going to rotate it out, and behind me, like I'm trying to shut a door. And then I'm going to bring that palm back. Now everything's going away from my ear, down towards the floor behind me. Coming back down into that neutral position. Then I'm going to reverse the path, pushing my palm directly behind me. Reaching back, keeping that rib cage down. Then I'm going to rotate my hand out. Bringing that bicep all the way up by my ear again. Shrugging up to the ceiling, rib cage down. Slowly reaching forward, getting that, letting that arm be long. Slowly coming back down to the start position. And then I'm going to switch sides. Back over to the mat, or uh, back over to the other side. So I'm locking out that leg, pushing that lead heel down, creating that tension in the hip. I'm going to reach forward, shoulder blades gliding forward throughout this movement. I'm letting that humerus and scapula move where they need to move to get there. Going all the way up over my head, bicep by my ears, rotating like a rotisserie chicken, out, back behind me. Reaching back. Once I'm behind me, I'm gonna let that shoulder drift away from the ear, drop down to that neutral position. Then I'm gonna reverse the path, so palm's gonna face behind me. Reaching back, 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 all the way back, rotating out, spinning that palm in back towards my body, bicep comes back by the ear, reaching forward, all the way through, Woo. back down to neutral. So, shake it out. We're going to do the uh, shoulder exercises, the I, W, Y, and T. This is a fun one, a fun series. So what I'm going to do is, you tilt it up a little more. Nice. We're going to be in the hinge position. So from the side, I'm going to keep my arms straight next to my body, pulling them in to my side. And the eye and the go overhead, palms facing each other, coming right back. I'm going to go five times back and to the front. So keep moving, five reps, overhead, chest up, pressure in the front of the foot, butt back. Once you've done five, you're going to keep that position and then you're going to go into a Y. So I'm touching my knees with my hands, reaching overhead, but I'm coming out into a Y, so I'm out at a 45 degree angle now. I'm reaching up over my head, chest up, butt back, keeping that spine long. I'm gonna do five reps here. Then, I'm gonna go into the W. 
So I'm going to bend my elbows to 90 degrees. I'm going to elevate my elbows and my wrists like I'm reading a book. And then I'm a squirrel suit diver. <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind, but there you go. We're going to do five reps, elbows and wrists to the ceiling, staying in that hinge position. And then on the fifth one, we're going to go to the T, which is keeping the elbows straight all the way out. Once you're done with those, you can shake it out, get out of that position. Said I, W, Ys, and Ts. Now we're going to lie on the ground, and we're going to do an archer. So the archer <laughs> So I'm here, my knees are stacked, my hands are on top of one another, and I'm going to inhale, and I'm going to draw that bowstring back, rotating backwards, exhale, slide the fingers back where they came. Inhale. And I'm trying to keep my knees stacked while I'm moving. Exhale. I'm going to do it at a breathing pace. Five, four rep, five reps on the right, five reps on the left. That was four for me. And then I'm going to switch. Inhale, exhale, it's one. Inhale, exhale, it's two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Try to keep that high knee from sliding. I'm getting a little stiff here. Ugh. And that's five. So keep pay attention to those, that knee stack. All right, now we're going to stretch the neck out a little bit, and we're going to do that in a kneeling position. So I'm going to push the knees out, away from each other, squeezing the glutes. I'm going to lock out my elbows, push my uh, thumb, my, my hands towards the ground. That's going to create some trap tension, and then very slowly I'm going to create small circles, draw them with my neck, so I'm going to, or draw them with my chin. So I'm going to go clockwise five times, five reps. And you just want to listen to what your body's telling you with how tight your neck is. That's three for me. I'm getting a little ambitious now. I'm going to try bigger circles. Try to keep those elbows locked, and then reverse the track. Keeping those knees pushed apart. And then once you've done with your, your five circles on each way, you're going to come out into the four-point stance again, and you're going to stretch your wrists. So what I'm here is the elbows are locked, and then tuck, tucking them in. I'm rocking gently forward over my wrists. I'm just giving them a little bit of love. You're going to feel some stretches or some stretching in your forearms, in your hands. Make sure your fingertips are spread wide. So you're going to do a few reps here. And then you're going to take your index finger and you're going to rotate it out and away. So you're going to completely turn, uh, uh, externally rotate till your index finger is pointing back at you. As long as, if you can do that without pain, go ahead and go, go or do as much as you can. And then once you get into this position, you're going to feel a stretch immediately. And you're gently going to rock, just ever so gently back and forth. You're going to feel that even more in your hands, your wrists, your biceps, your shoulders. And you're not trying to force anything. The wrists are, you know, they're not meant to uh, go to extreme uh, or do extreme range of motion tricks. 
Um, and you never want to force a muscle or uh, a joint to do something it doesn't want to do. You just want to gently lean into it, let it, let it change, let it stretch. Once you've done that, going to shake it out. Nice. And then we're going to get into one of my personal favorites, the bretzel. And I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk you through Bootsy getting into a bretzel because you can see her better against the floor. And uh, it takes a, a little bit of doing. So she's lying on her left side. Her left knee is going to be bent behind her. Her right hand is going to be gripping her left foot. Her left hand is going to be gripping her thigh that's uh, on the high side. So she's on the left side. Uh, her, she's lying on her left side, and she's grabbing her left foot. So she's here, and she's, as she's breathing, she's trying to get this shoulder to touch the ground. She's going to continue to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. She's just going to breathe. And this high, this high hip, she's going to pull forward more over her body as she goes. She's going to continue to breathe and try to touch that high shoulder, the, in this case the right shoulder, to the ground. So she's stretching her quad, stretching her glutes, stretching her thoracic spine. She's rotating that thoracic spine a little bit more than she's used to. How's it feel, Bootsy? Oh, boy. Like heaven. So, <laughs> so good. So Bootsy's a flexible person, um, but this morning she's a little bit stiff, so I'm giving her a little assistance. If you don't have a coach standing over you, you can put your knee on a couch or something to, to catch it so that it doesn't slide away from you as you're as you do your own stretches. Now Bootsy's going to rotate to the other side. It's harder than the actual stretch itself. <laughs> so now she's on her right side. Her right leg is bent behind her. She's breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. The high shoulder is trying to touch the ground here. Yikes. Feel on the quad? So you, should, you could feel this in your quad, you could feel this in your glutes, you could feel this in your upper back, in your shoulders, chest, and neck. The, the bretzel, which is German for pretzel, uh, is a, uh, a, a total body stretch. It's valuable for so many things. This is one of the things that uh, I'll take a break in the middle of the day and I'll just jump into it because um, it, it loosens up a little bit of everything. So she's going to take one more big breath. And then that is, that is the bretzel. And uh, now that you're all loosened up and your hip flexors are, are a little bit more relaxed, we can uh, do some uh, stuff on our feet. So we're going to get rid of these mats. So we're going to start with a, a deep squat with hamstring bias. So I'm going to be on my feet. We're going to do some squats. Our, my heels are shoulder width, and they're pointed, my toes are pointed out to 20 degrees. So I'm going to drop down into the squat, and I'm going to grab the inside of my shoe. Chest is going to stay up, and I'm going to inhale. As I look up, exhale as I come back down. Inhale as I reach up, look into my hand. Exhale to come back down, and then I'm going to inhale, and then I'm going to exhale as I tuck my chin to my chest and stand all the way up. And then I'm going to sit back down, inhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. That's two. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. That's three. When you stand up, you want to keep your chin tucked to your chest. That does a couple of things. That stretches your upper back. It also flosses the sciatic nerve. Exhale. That's four. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. Ow. Yes. All right. Now we are ready to take on the day. Got one more fun drill to do before we uh, get our day started. We're going to do the 
lateral lunge walk around. So I've got a double wide stance. I'm going to reach down. I'm going to put my plant my hand on the inside of my lead foot. My forearm is next to my ankle. I'm going to walk all the way out. Walk all the way in. And then as I walk all the way out and back, I'm going to go ahead and add a rotation into that. So I'm going to reach up to the sky, come back down. Good, that's two. We're going to go three more times on each side. Two more times. You know, after 20, 20 or 30 minutes of stretching, I'm almost ready to, I'm almost ready to do a real squat. One more, one more rep each side, warriors. Ha! Alrighty then. Woo! So, what do we do? We went through our whole body and we got out some of the kinks, just some of the kinks. You never get 100% of the kinks out. We did get some of them out today though. Uh, increased sitting, less, less um, regular movement in our day. Even when you're not walking to the water cooler, you're not going up and down the stairs to your office, all those things have, a, have an effect on your body. And uh, so we're trying to mitigate that with some activity. Now what we're gonna do is the homework. Wow. Yes. All right. So, you remember the homework. You're, you're, you're going to do 20 seconds of push-ups, sit-outs, knee grabs, and chin-ups. If you've got a chin-up bar, great, you can use it. If you don't have a chin-up bar, you can do the swimmer. And uh, Coach Bootsy is going to coach you through the, uh, the, the homework. And, uh, uh, but I'm going to demonstrate the swimmer to you really quick. So if you're doing a chin up, you can do that. The swimmer, however, looks like this. I'm lying down on the ground. I'm reaching out in front of me, pulling the water into my chest, reaching out, pulling the water into my chest. So you're gonna go for 20 seconds each, each activity. You'll do 20 seconds. You'll have 10 seconds to transition. And then uh, uh, just follow along. So guys, uh, regardless if you're doing a strict push-up or a assisted push-up, we want to make sure that our form is perfect, right? So with our push-ups, we're only using, we're only utilizing 65% of our body weight as far as what we're lifting, and so we never want to do a kneeling push-up. We always want to do a progressed push-up. So if you're going to do a um, a an assisted push-up, you're going to make sure that you are your body is completely on, your feet are together, your knees are together, everything's on. All the way down, touch your chest, your couch, your coffee table. Don't lose those abs. If you lose your abs, your butt comes down. So keep that butt slightly raised. All the way down, keeping those elbows in tight or at a 45 degree angle. Same thing if you're doing strict, all right? And all the way down to the floor, having your uh, shoulders slightly over your wrist, pushed forward, coming down and up. Then we're gonna do our knee grabs, making sure we start with our legs stretched out, arms really tight, throwing those arms forward to grab those shins and get those shoulders over those hips. Back down, just get those shoulder blades to touch the ground, up and back. Then we're going to go into our sit-outs. Our sit-outs, knees are in tight to our hands. I kick that front leg forward, it's in tight to my wrist. I'm not coming out far with it, I'm not putting strain on my shoulder. Coming in tight, I'm facing this direction as this foot is flat on the ground. Come back in, switch out to the other side. All right, so we're gonna do 20 seconds of each, try to keep track of all your reps. We're gonna be going, we're gonna start with our push ups. So we're gonna start in three, Heather's got it, two, one, here we go. If you get tired, just stop. We never want crappy reps. We only want perfect reps. If you need to push back, rest, move those arms. That's okay. All right. 
Go into our knee grabs next. We've got four seconds left before we transition. And we're going now. <laughs> Making sure to get those sweet feet right on the ground at the top, guys. Got about five seconds left. Transitioning into our sit outs. Sit outs. All right, my knees are hovering, they're in tight to my wrists. And we're going. It's a little bit slippery on the mat with my sacks. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like I stated here. All right. Got about five seconds left, guys. Woo! Get those heart rates up. Right. Now, you're either going to do your chin ups and give a chin up bar, or you're going to do your swimmers. All right. We're transitioning, getting those feet pushed into the ground, reaching forward, pulling that virtual water underneath us. As we lift our chest slightly off the ground. All right. That was it. That's your homework. Warriors, I was watching uh, this X Men movie last night. I'm going to impart to you a little bit of wisdom. So, Dr. Xavier was talking to uh, one of his mutant students who has a lot of power. And uh, she was, she was uh, debating on what to do with her power, using it for good or evil. And he was like, hey, here's this pen. You can use this pen to either write something beautiful or you can use this pen to poke somebody's eyes out. The pen is still the pen. It's what you choose to do with it, all right? Coronavirus is the coronavirus. The coronavirus is the pen. It's just going to be that thing, whatever it is. But it's what we choose to do with our actions during this time. You know, that's the important thing. And staying strong. Staying strong, staying healthy. My only choice right now is to be positive. That's all I got, you know. I just don't want to go down that negative path and get all sad. And, and uh, I just have to keep problem solving and keep figuring stuff out. So let's use each other. To help keep each other strong, keep each other mobile, yeah, keep breathing, good times. <laughs> you bring forth the warrior within. Core team out, X-Force.